Hello, I'm John. This is my Lionel Johnson model, and you're watching War Games Models and Other Hobbies. Hello, and welcome to the video. Now, I'm going to be taking a look at how I painted certain parts of my Lionel Johnson model. What I'm going to be doing is a few little videos on how I painted certain sections of it. The first bit that I'm going to be looking at is how I painted the green armour on this model. So it's going to be the same green that I use for my Dark Angel army that I'm going to paint for 10th edition. So let's get started and have a look at the process that I use. So I have here an intercessor squad that is painted with all of the stages for the green that I work with. What I'll be doing, I'll run through each of the processes, then I'm actually going to paint each of the processes on the models just so you can see what I actually do. So to start with, the first thing that I do, which we have with this model, is I prime them with the white scar spray. The next thing that I do is I paint the models with, in this case, a bowel red, but you could use any ink wash for this process. I then use the Dark Angels Green Contrast Paint on the model. I then do a dry brush of Moot Green. And to finish the green armour, I do a wash of Null Noil. So let's get started with this model just here, and I'm going to paint it with the Bal Red. Now the reason why I paint this with an ink first, I've done it with a few of the contrast paints that I've used. I use an opposite colour from the colour wheel to help gain um, some nice contrast on some of the details within there. So where we have more of the red build up, we get a darker contrast with the contrast paint. Now I've previously done it on a flesh tearer that I painted with a green wash first before going in with the red contrast paint and it worked really well. Now this first process that I do, I'm not too worried about being tidy with this. I just want to get this red wash onto the model so it will highlight the different areas and then I can get on with the next stages. It's only the final stages of the paint I tend to be tidy with. The first ones, I just throw the paint on. So, let me finish this off and we'll go on to the next stage. Okay, so there we have it, a wash of the bowel red. Like I said, it could be any red wash that you want to put on there. It doesn't have to be the bowel red, but my personal preference is this one. Now, while that one dries, let's have a look at the one I'd previously done. So the reason, let's just get this into focus. There we go. So the reason why I like to paint this contrasting colour before I put the contrast paint on is I personally like the surface it creates to put that contrast paint on. I like the depth that it gives the contrast paint. This is an optional process. You don't necessarily have to, but like I said, I prefer to do this. So once I've got to this stage and it's dried the next step let me just put that on that one is to paint with the contrast paint so in this case i'm using the dark angels green so 
So what I want to do with this is paint all of the sections I've painted red with the contrast paint. And I want to put plenty of it on to let it do its thing. Now the contrast paints are really interesting because they're a high pigment paint, but they also have a clear or slightly pigmented base to them. It allows the colors to kind of, the heavier colors, the pigment to flow into certain areas of the model and the thinner, almost transparent base starts to come out on the kind of the higher points, which gives you that contrast finish. But as I said, with the earlier stage, you don't have to really worry about that red layer if you don't want to, but I prefer it. I prefer the way that the contrast paint goes onto it. I've done it with a green ink, green wash, and then a red contrast paint. I do want to try it with a few other contrast paints just to see the different effects that it has. I'm not necessarily sure if it will work with a yellow contrast paint due to the fact that it will be a blue or a turquoise that you paint on to um, get that higher contrast. So I'm, I'm not sure if that would necessarily work. It might come out with slight green highlights rather than the yellow. So it's something that I will try in the future though. But anyway, enough of me babbling on. What I'm going to do is carry on painting this contrast paint. So there is the contrast paint on the model. Contrast paint can take a while to dry, so you really want to let it sit now for quite a while before you put the next stage on. What you may find, if you do it too early, the contrast paint can peel off a little bit. So this one's now going to go to one side, and we'll get to the one that I did earlier. So here we have this one that has already been painted with the contrast paint. And the next step is to do a dry brush of Moot Green. So the key thing with the dry brush, especially with this stage because it's the whole model, I'm going to use quite a big dry brush. I'm only going to use a small amount of paint on the brush itself. And then I'm going to knock most of that paint off. Okay, so there we have the dry brush layer over the whole model. Now, you could leave it at this point. I prefer my Dark Angels Green to be slightly darker than this, which is why I do the next stage. It also picks out a few details. But if you wanted to make this green lighter, you could do extra dry brush coats to bring it lighter and lighter, either with different greens or still the moot green. You could then paint um, salamander armor or something similar like that. So the next step in this, so we have our other dry brush model here, is using Muln Oil to paint over the armor itself to darken it off and give a few more low lights in certain areas. So again, with this layer, I'm not too worried about tidiness. I want to paint over the whole model itself rather than just picking out details. The whole point of this method that I use is to get the bulk color done as rapidly as possible. 
so I can get lots of models base coated and the simple base colors done very quickly, whether it's the greens or it's other colors altogether. So as you can see as well, I'm not being precious about where I'm painting. I just want to get this ink, this wash onto the model itself. So that's the legs done. So let me quickly finish this off and we'll have a look at the final one. So there we have that quick wash over the top done. Gonna have to let that dry now. So let's have a look at the one that I'd done previously. This one just here. So as you can see, it makes that armor a lot darker, but we still have the highlights from the dry brushing and the core color through from that contrast paint. But yeah, there we have it, the Dark Angel's Green. Now there are many methods to paint miniatures. This is just a method that I personally use and I really like how it turns out. So I'm planning to do a few more squads of Dark Angels for this edition of 40k that's coming out. What I will be doing as well is the further videos on how I paint the details on this individual squad. But I'm also going to do some videos on how I painted other main colours on... Lionel Johnson. So I am going to do videos on how I did the gold as well as the cloak and the watchers in the dark as it'd be really nice to go through those processes. I like to do as quick and easy processes as possible. So I don't do anything complicated and hopefully you'll watch these videos and get inspired and paint your own miniatures. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video on how I paint Dark Angels green. If you'd like to see any more of the processes that I use, please drop a comment. But for now, my name's John, and you've been watching War Games Models and Other Hobbies.